It's time to break down some football. We gotta get our mind right. Touchdown, win. From the perspective of guys who played in the NFL. Caught, touchdown. And a guy who had one really great sack in high school. Ah, oh, you're so weak. You're wasting my time. Greg Camarillo and Marcus McNeil are the pros, and Scraby is the Joe. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Two pros and a Joe starts right now. Two pros and a Joe, episode number two of season number two, right here with you. I'm Matt Scraby. Then we got Greg Camarillo, Marcus McNeil, and those guys are the pros. I am the Joe, as you know. In the, in this episode, we're going to talk all about week one, and I'm really distracted by all the pointing that Greg's doing up there in his camera. It's <laughs> really nice. But I appreciate the uh, the the um, uh, energy that Greg is bringing. So Bring that shit, Greg. yeah, if you want to keep up to date with us at Two Pros and a Joe on Twitter and Instagram, <laughs> and then at Catch Camarillo, at uh, Marcus McNeil seventy three, and at Matt Scraby. So I'm just gonna get right into it. Let's start with what happened in Week One, and I'm gonna pose a question to you guys: Best game of the weekend for this opening week of the season was either the first game of the season between the Cowboys and the Buccaneers or the last game of the week, which was the Ravens and the Raiders on Monday Night Football. I personally enjoyed Ravens Raiders because as the Raiders scored that touchdown, they thought that was a walk-off touchdown. The, The referee was like, the game is not over. Everybody get off the field. The game is not over. And then he throw Derek Carr throws an interception, gets tipped, and the Ravens intercepted in the end zone. I thought that was that was my moment of football is back, baby. What do you guys think? First game, last game. Let's go, Greg. Last game. I'm with you, Scrapes. Monday Night Football, the biggest stage, brand new stadium, Las Vegas, brand new, uh, sorry, brand new with fans. So the first mm-hmm. time Raider Nation gets to be in that stadium. Uh, uh, Lamar Jackson, first of all, the huge question was, is he going to take a step forward this year? So far, absolutely. He looked awesome. Uh, and then Lamar scores with 30 seconds left, thought the game was over. The Raiders tie it up. And then the Raiders almost score. Literally, the game's over. They're hugging each other. They come back out, throw a pick. Lamar's got a chance. Lamar fumbles. Raiders touchdown. Like, what, what better excitement could you <laughs> ask for in your first Monday night? Love that game. Seriously. What do you think, Marcus? No, man, I, I I hear y'all. I hear you talking now. It's Monday night football. <laughs> Just flapping our gums, huh? Yeah, you got you got the big stadium up, you know what I'm saying? But it's the Raiders stadium, you know what I mean? Like, uh. Uh, you know, I want to see Lamar play. You know, I'm not going to lie, but, you know, besides, the best thing was Lamar in the stadium in that game. I, 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 but I'm just I'm talking I'm talking a little shit now because it was <laughs> it was a good game it was a good game like the the end was very dramatic you know and I love to see that but I got to go with the opener because mm. you got America's team and then you got Tom Brady and the boys down there versus Tampa like that's what you want to see I wanted to see was Dak Prescott going to be able to come back after that horrific injury that he had. I wanted to see, you know, what Tom Brady and the boys were going to be able to do as they jailed a little bit more. Were they going to be better than they were last year? And they they brought it. They looked like it. I wanted to see if Tom Brady could still slang that thing because I just cannot believe he's this old and still do it. <laughs> you know, and they, get, they gave it all to me. You know, Dak came out there. And, and he looked like he did before he left and got hurt last year when he was one of the premier quarterbacks in the league. I'm seeing big plays from C.D. Lamb, Amari Cooper, big play after big play after big play. Good defensive play uh, by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Like, that's how I want to see a season start. You know what I'm saying? I want to see, like, two teams that we want to see in, in the playoffs at the end of the year and, and see how they match up week one. And they showed it to me. They, they came out and Tom Brady, I don't know how the hell Mm-mm. you give the ball back to Tom Brady at the end. Like, how many times do we got to go around this merry-go-round? You Seriously. know what I'm saying? Like, Seriously. please stop. Do not I, give yeah. this man 
Don't give him the ball back with more than two seconds, please. I, two seconds. Even then, you're like, uh-oh. He's yeah, got the yeah. ball. He, yeah. Don't give the ball back to Tom Brady, period. A uh, couple thoughts about that game. I, I, Dak Prescott looked really good, and he looked like he was worth every penny that the Cowboys paid him. CeeDee Lamb also looks like he's going to be outstanding. He was open. I mean, he had a few drops, but – when he got open, he was open and he was also fast and he found space that was, wasn't occupied all the good stuff and all the terms that I could throw out in front of two NFL guys. Um, <laughs> but I really enjoyed that game too. I did. I did. I guess I'm just thinking Monday night football was top of mind, but it was good to see that the, at first going into the game, I was thinking, man, Cowboys and bucks, like, uh, eh, whatever. I don't really care about that. But then when it got going, you see Tom Brady and Antonio Brown, Antonio Brown's going to be incredible this year because he's had a full off season to work with Tom. I, I just, I just can't help but think that the, the bucks are going to at least unless major injury happens, they're going to be in the Super Bowl this year. Again, it's just a, one of those aforementioned things, I think so. Yeah. But it looks solid, but it's week one, Scraby. I know down. I need to calm it's down. Week, and it's a 17 game season. It's week one. It's 17. No, nah, it's not even 16. You got 17 games this year. That's true. Oh, that's true. Because that's, uh, that's what week one's for, though, man. We're declaring Super Bowl champion. <laughs> overreaction <laughs> is my favorite part of the NFL season. Because James I'm really Winston. good at overreacting. James Winston for MVP, baby. What y'all I'm, about? I'm here for it. I'm here for it. <laughs> Let's go to uh, some of the other – we're going to get to rookie debuts at the end, but let's go to some of these surprising losses that we saw over the weekend. And everybody thought the Titans were going to be the team that was going to contend in the AFC. The Arizona Cardinals went to Tennessee, and they just freaking destroyed the Titans. Like, it wasn't even – it wasn't even close. It was 38-13. to 13. Kyler Murray had five touchdowns. Cardinals did whatever they wanted in this game against the Titans. Taylor Luan looked like an idiot out there. He even tweeted after the game. He said, thank you for making me better, Chandler Jones. He had five sacks. Don't like, put that out there, man. Stop. Okay, yeah, yeah. Let's hear about that. You guys Just don't like that? Take ass whooping and, and, and shut up and go back to go back to practice. <laughs> Marcus, would you ever tweet, he beat, beat my ass and uh, I'm oh, going to get better for it? No, hell no. Hell That's no, interesting because I kind of like it. I never gave up that many sacks either. I would never. I wouldn't even <laughs> think about that. Like, I would have came back, like, with the club, you know, like, no, nah, give me that knee. <laughs> <Not no more. laughs> like you got to draw the line somewhere. Good Lord, man. For real. That's it. Okay. Uh, now I'm on the side of that. It's an embarrassing tweet. That's an embarrassing tweet yeah. for him to, to do. He's also very, he's a really emotional dude. So I guess, and he's also younger. Maybe he's that millennial generation that needs to tweet everything. <laughs> yeah. I, the, the Titans just didn't look good. Week one, you know, and Arizona came out fast. Like you expect them to be. Kyler Murray still can't be tackled. He's looking like Russell Wilson running around, and he has the arm to prove it, mm -hmm. and he has more weapons. Like, they're just a fast team. And, and we all know that Tennessee likes to line it up, you know, and pound the ball. And if, if you get scored on that fast, that's not the type of game they're trying to play. Before I forget, and we'll get to Greg, your thoughts on the game. J.J. Watt stopped Derrick Henry at the goal line, and I was like, wow, J.J. Watt is A, he is at least healthy and looking like he's healthy in week one, and B, that is incredible. How do you stop a guy like Derrick Henry at the goal line? And they stuffed him twice, two right. times in a row. Derrick Henry is a beast. How did they do that? It's crazy. You got to get him before he get that momentum going. That's the that's key. That's true. Like you got to, yeah. you got to get to him. And and if you're gonna stop him, that's the way to stop him is with the, that front four. You got to have somebody on that D line that's gonna get penetration so that he doesn't get a chance to like gather speed and gather that force. And and now he's just a big guy. So uh, kudos to kudos to the Cardinals, man. Way to come out and just make Vrabel look terrible. <laughs> what do you think, Greg, about the game? I, I was I was high on the Titans early. I mean, they had so they got AJ Brown, gigantic human being wide receiver, Derrick mm -hmm. Henry, gigantic human being running back, and then they added gigantic human being Julio Jones. Like on Julio. paper, that, like if I'm Ryan Tannehill, I'm I'm dude, that's glorious. And then it just didn't look good, but you know it. it, it we like to overreact. That's our job for week one. <laughs> but I'm going to put Kyler Murray right there with Jameis Winston in the MVP call. Wow. <laughs> he should. He should. You're right. He that should dude be look good. And I'm talking like the accuracy of his throw. So a, a quarterback can have, if they have no other skill, if they're accurate, 
they can be a good quarterback. And he has all the other skills. But these throws he was making, it's a receiver's dream, man. An accurate quarterback makes a receiver open no matter what. No matter what my route looks like, an accurate quarterback gets me open. And that's exactly what Kyler Murray was doing. He did. He did. And uh, so the Cardinals looking like the NFC West right now, the division of B, all four teams won in the NFC West. And I believe all four teams in, uh, I'm not going to try to think on the fly. We're just going to move to my next note because that's all I'm good for is the notes in front of me. Saints over the Packers 38 to three. This one probably was the most surprising game of the weekend, not just because the Saints won, but because the Saints blew out the Packers. Aaron Rodgers looked out of it. I, I, I don't know. I, I like to think because I'm a hater, I like to think that uh, it was because he jacked around the team all summer and the team was pissed at him for doing that. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Greg, for that hand motion. <laughs> and it just was like he he walked in and he had like slick back hair. I'm like, what the hell is going on with Aaron Rodgers right now? Slick back. But the same I mean, when, you're, either, when your way. quarterback is doing a sit down interview with Aaron Andrews, not about football, but about what the hell happened this offseason. Like that just shows you they're not on the right page. So this game to me was a prime example of a man who's trying to prove himself and took his offseason seriously in Jameis Winston and a man who just doesn't give a shit and was just like, oh, well, <laughs> I'm going to show up and play football in Aaron Rodgers. And look at look at the difference. And I'm not saying it's going to continue like that. Aaron Rodgers is going to get it together. But to me, that was just a fine example of somebody that's committed to being a team leader as opposed to someone that's halfway in, halfway out, and that's the result you get. Boom for clot. Now that boy, was it his hair? Was it the hair? <laughs> was it the hair that y'all didn't like on Aaron Rodgers? I, I mean, I, I'm not gonna lie. I almost threw Aaron Rodgers out of the out of the NFL yesterday because he was on my fantasy team. And oh. was like a two point. I'm like, bro, like Aaron, come on now. What are you doing? Hey, hey Ron. But to be honest, like he didn't look as bad when I went back and watched the game again, you know, his, his play action was still on point. You know, uh, I really just feel like the saints came out ready. They controlled the ball. They controlled the tempo. They were able to throw it and run it at the same time. And I think when Aaron might've had a chance towards the end of the game to make a little bit of a run, they actually called the rough and the passer on Jameis Winston, and then mm -hmm. they come back and score the touchdown right after that to just put the game too far out of reach. So at that point in time, I think you just kind of, you know, push your chips in and be like, all right, I'll just come back next week and get ready. But they didn't look as bad. I just think New Orleans looked better week one. Yeah, and after the game, you could just tell Aaron Rodgers and Matt LaFleur just are not on the same page because Matt LaFleur was like, yeah, this is extremely disappointing and shocking. And Aaron Rodgers is like, huh? I, I didn't think so. I, I don't know what he's talking about. It's like, what? <laughs> what? One thing to add to that is the impressive factor of the, the saints playing in a third party stadium. They played in Jacksonville, right? They you did know, because of the hurricane. They haven't been home. I was, when I played in new Orleans, we left because a hurricane was coming and spent a week in Cincinnati. And then oh. when, and then we ended up playing our final preseason game, I think, in Tennessee. But just to watch the guys – I was living in hotels. So I didn't affect my home life. But to watch the guys stress about my house is flooded, my wife's not at home, you know, my car might be flooded. Like, the mm. stress that comes with that, being out of town and not being able to control your home, and then to put that aside and go out there and dominate like that, man, that, that, that is impressive. That's good. Yeah. That's a good point. I wouldn't be surprised if they use that maybe as a little motivation, to be honest, Greg. Yeah, like, you yeah. know, when, when you're that distressed about stuff, you know, like you kind of want to go and win for your city. If I'm not mistaken, didn't they win the Super Bowl the year after the uh, Katrina, the hurricane? Yeah, I, I would I'm have to go mind. back, but it does sound like it, it does sound familiar. Yeah, I, I think I think that's actually what happened. So, you know, maybe it's one of those situations where it's like, hey, we ain't got nothing left but us. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, let's let's go out here and stick together, you know, and and, and put one up for the team or, or the home team, which is New Orleans, you know. So I, I'm guessing that's the that's the wave they had to be riding on for them to come out and play that good. But they look like they were clicking on all cylinders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Next game on the list is uh, before we move into the rookie debuts, it, as we wrap up the podcast, the Steelers beat the Bills 23-16. I'm putting this on there because. 
the Bills are one of those teams that's going to definitely uh, contend for an AFC title if they're lucky. But the Steelers scored 17 points in the fourth quarter. Bills lose 23-16. I, I said on Gwyn and Chris, 97.3 The Fan, I said that the Steelers were going to be the biggest disappointment in the NFL this season. Damn. And in week one, they're proving me to be the idiot that I am because yeah. they, they came back and won. Mike, Mike Tomlin's a great coach. I can't take anything away from him from there, but I just don't see Ben Roethlisberger be able to hang in there for 17 games this season. Scraves, I was with you, man, and, and really had – not so much to do with the Steelers as it did their division. I thought Cleveland and Baltimore were going to be the teams from there and the Steelers would just fall off. But shit, we were both wrong. <laughs> Bro, like the Pittsburgh is just a solid organization. It's one of those organizations that you really can't count out. And since they haven't changed the quarterback, you know, position and, and besides the injuries kind of barring them from like having him the past few years, I think they've, they've been pretty solid. And them picking up Najee Harris at running back from Alabama was a very solid pick. So I didn't feel like they were going to be as good as Cleveland and Baltimore, like you said. But I always feel like they have a chance at the division just because they're the Steelers. Yeah. And I think the Bills will come back. I mean, like we said, it's week one. There's lots that can happen over the rest of the season. And maybe this fuels the Bills to say, okay, we're we're – not invincible we do need to prepare a little bit better whatever they say in the locker room i don't know you, you know what the problem was with the bills right scrapes what, uh, divide, what divided their locker room cole beasley yes. the, <laughs> <laughs> you know what i like about the cole beasley thing real quick is that he was like i got fined but i only like walk five five steps into the facility uh i and, but he's like i knew the rules and i walked five steps into the facility i'm like okay dude you knew the rules like you can't complain I, I mean, I, the, granted i think that five steps into the facility is pretty stupid to be fined fifteen thousand dollars over but the rules the rule i guess the, 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 the rules. left tackle that got dominated that tweeted out his thank you for Taylor kicking Luan. ass he needs to get kicked off of twitter and then cole beasley needs to chill on twitter too, <laughs> you know, too. Cole, beasley. Twitter chills. cole beasley yeah. feels like he's like the american hero right now or something like that i don't know what's going on <laughs> with that guy. He, he does not he does not really care about much of anything right now except for him i guess <laughs> Uh, he's, a, he's a rebel with a cause, man. Yeah, yeah, he is. Uh, good point, Greg. Good point. Going back to our first podcast of the season. <laughs> you can find that on our podcast list. All right, rookie debuts. We talked about it a little bit with Cam Newton and uh, him and the Patriots. Mac Jones lost to the Dolphins by a point, but he was pretty good. 29 for 39, 281 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. And his quarterback rating was the highest of any rookie in all of week one. So uh, he, he made some pretty good throws in this game. I saw one to James White over the shoulder that I was like, okay, Mac, I, I get you. I see what you're doing right there. And I, I think that this, his debut, even though he's probably going to struggle a, a lot this season and learn, I think that it proved why they went with him over Cam Newton for the long term. And uh, Mac Jones, I think they're going to be safe with as quarterback of the Patriots. What do you guys think? Uh, I, I... I saw Mac Jones play at Alabama. He does have an arm. He just doesn't look like it, though. Hmm. He just does not <laughs> like – like, he gives me uh, – and he might turn out to be the GOAT like Tom Brady because, like, if you ever seen Tom Brady at the combine or, you hmm. know, running everywhere, it doesn't look pretty, you know, and that's what Mac Jones reminds me of. Like, it doesn't look pretty, but one thing I do hear about the kid is, like, he is an awesome education. Uh, well, he's an awesome student of the game. Mm -hmm. He he literally, they say he's out in the yard practicing plays with his girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. Looking at the defensive playbook, you know, to try and figure out, you know, how to get better uh, versus certain defenses. When you have that much commitment as a rookie at the quarterback position, you're making a statement, not only to your team, but your coaches and the front office staff. So they see that commitment in him. And I think that's what they were they're willing to bet on. So I, I was I was a hater. I was a scrapey going in going into week one <laughs> just because well, I mean, everyone was singing his praises over preseason. But preseason does tell us anything because nobody's really blitzing you. You're not seeing any exotic coverages. So I thought the team. Of course, my team, my former team, Miami, was going to show up 
hit him with all those blitzes, surprise the shit out of him, make him see ghosts like was that Sam Darnold with the Jets a couple years ago. <laughs> and it was the total opposite. This dude could knew where the pressure was coming from, knew where to go with the ball. And he's still working with a shitty wide receiver core. Like Nelson Aguilar and Nikhil Harry, those are not like big names that you would put out there as, as a core. He got some good tight ends. But I was impressed, man. He didn't have all the weapons in the world. The O-line did a great job. He knew where the pressure was coming from. He knew the answers to where that pressure was coming. And he put his team in a position to win, and the running back fumbled it away. So, overall, man, tip of the cap to Mac Jones. He did a good job. I would say one thing, too, Greg, to kind of add to that. Like, when you know what you're doing, it slows the game down. And, like, every player coming into the league has to know that. Like, if you know what you're doing, it can slow the game down to where you can make plays. But if you don't know what's going on, it looks bad. It looks bad. And you can tell because you're on live TV. Yeah, you're on live TV and everybody's watching. To the number one overall pick, Trevor Lawrence, he threw three touchdowns, three interceptions, and a loss to the Texans. I thought the Texans were going to be a terrible team, but they crushed the uh, – they crushed the um, – who am I trying to talk about right now? The Jaguars. And I think that Urban Meyer – I'm just counting down the minutes until that guy is out of the Jaguars because there's already – a bunch of news about him and how he's angry all the time. He's yelling at coaches in the preseason. He's taking over drills on his own. And Trevor Lawrence, he he looked uh, he looked like he was a little. He looked very confused. He did not look Mac Jones at all. And I didn't see the number one pick there. Obviously, long season, but Greg is emphatically shaking his head no. So let's go to you, Greg. All right, they were one in fifteen last year because they sucked, and <laughs> one guy is not going to make them better. I, I mean, that's just. The nature of being the first pick. It's not like you're one pick away from being a great team. Uh, and in Urban Meyer, this is his first shot in the NFL. Like you can't, what works in college doesn't work in the pros. In college, you can just control everybody and everything. That shit doesn't go well when somebody's making $10 million and doesn't want to be controlled. You can't tell them what to do. So it, there's two guys right there with steep learning curves and, and, and they're just not that good of a roster on top of that. So, uh, is it enough to judge Trevor Lawrence? Absolutely not. But was it a terrible performance? Absolutely. It, it's, it really is nothing else to say. You know what I'm saying? What, what's understood does not need to be explained. They suck. They <laughs> suck. You know what I'm saying? Like, Jacksonville sucks. You're going to have to bring Trevor Lawrence and probably the next five years worth of first-round picks to, like, you know, <laughs> load him up to, like, get them to where they need to be. And – it's a team game, so we can't put it all on him. You know, he, he's a great quarterback, but this is the first time he has had to deal with adversity. His first regular season loss since high school ever? Like, well, how does that even happen? Mm. How do you make it through, you know, college and high school and not even oh. ever receive a, a loss in, in the regular season? So we're going to have to see what type of mindset he has and if he's going to be ready – to make something happen in the NFL or, you know, he'll just be, you know, in Jacksonville. Another bust. Another bust. <laughs> Jacksonville. Is, is he the bust or is Jacksonville the bust? That's the question. Mm. You put him on any other team, he probably looks decent. Yeah. Know? We've well, talked about that before. First case study of the year. Oh, case right study now, time. Week one, <laughs> Sam Darnold in the Jets. Sam yes. Darnold was a dumpster fire with the dumpster fire of an organization, Jets. He leaves beat his old team with Carolina makes me believe it's more Jets than it is Sam Darnold. All right. Well, the next player on the list we're going to talk about in rookie debut, Zach Wilson, who is the quarterback of the Jets. I was a hater of him as well coming into the season. I guess I just hated everyone coming into the year. But uh, – Very on brand, Scraby. This, yeah, it's very – it's not very different for me. But yeah. Zach Wilson came in, and I was watching – I watched a lot of this game. I thought that he looked a lot better – than I would have expected. And I know that he can move, but he can throw on the run. And that's extremely dangerous in the NFL. If you can, if you can get away from the defenders and you can get away into like some open space and just to get set your feet, which he can, he could probably do pretty well. I, I would, I would think. Starting off two or 10 in the first half and then coming back and showing me that you, you know, can, can, can put your big boy pants on and put that half behind you and go play. That showed me a little bit. Still not sold on him, though. Still not sold yeah. on him. 
Yeah, I, I yeah. still take Justin Fields over him, you know, just because I'm, I was a Justin Fields guy. I felt like Trevor Lawrence was number one, Justin Fields number two since they were in high school. So when, you know, Trey Lance and Zach Wilson came up into the picture, I just didn't agree with it. So we'll have to see how he works out with the Jets. Yeah, I didn't even put Justin Fields or Trey Lance on the list because they didn't do really do enough. I know that uh, they both scored touchdowns, but it was kind of um, – they were yeah. easy throws and right in a run. So what do you yeah. think, Greg, about Zach so, Wilson? So to be honest with you, I didn't watch the Jets because they're the Jets. But what, I, <laughs> what, I, what I'm most interested in is seeing how what happens with Zach Wilson and the spotlight of New York. This is a Ooh. dude from Utah. Yeah. A Mormon guy at BYU in a small community, you know, like a protected community. And suddenly he is put on the biggest stage yeah. with the harshest critics. Uh, so I'm curious how 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 he's going to handle that. I, I, you know, I don't know him as a person, so I can't tell you if it's going to work or not. But that is the pressure. Like if anyone is under pressure, Zach Wilson is under pressure. It'll be interesting to see what happens over the course of the year. Good yeah, point. Brutal fans too. brutal fans. They're not going to take it too easy on them too long. <laughs> They've, he's got like three games before they're gonna burn his jersey in the street uh the last one on the list i would say jamar chase wide receiver for the Bengals. he caught a touchdown he looked pretty good uh, the reason i put him on the list is because earlier before the season started he said the reason for his drops in the preseason was because the college football was easier to catch than the nfl football because he said the white stripes helping to uh, identify the ball in the air I wanted to get Greg's uh, opinion on that being our wide receiver because that sounds like a major excuse that he should have. This goes in the the Taylor Luan tweet category and uh, whatever else we put in our categories earlier today. Oh, man, just things you, you wish you had back. As soon as it came out of his mouth, I know he was thinking like, damn, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a football. Like, catch it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Don't give me excuses. Look, I dropped passes. I'm going to get past that. I'm a, you know, and, and he took a year off, right? Like he opted out yeah. of his last year of college. Yeah. Like that could just be rust. You know, he hasn't been in game action, especially NFL game action. He'll get it together, man. The dude is unbelievably talented. Just, ah, just don't say those things, man. <laughs> Hold that back. Hey, I got to get a little cousin. I got to get a little cousin a, a pass, man. Like, you know, he had a year off. You know, those balls looked a little different. You know, like, they, they look different from college, they're from college to the pros, man. But I, I think that, you know, he's going to be a dynamic player. You know, you put him up there with Joe Burrow, you know, one of his old college teammates. I think that's another story around the league. Like, how many college quarterbacks ended up with their wide receivers from college. Like that's instant chemistry. Yeah. That's instant. Like, that's what? like Jaden Waddle. Waddle. You yeah. got Waddle. Then you got Hurts up there with uh uh with Devon, Devon, Smith. Yeah. Yeah. You know, with, with Philly. Uh then you got Burrow and Chase up there. So I'm interested to see which one of those have the biggest season. And they already seem to be connecting all the way along the board. You know, Waddle had a good game, you know, uh Smith had a good game. Chase called a touchdown. So I think when you have that chemistry coming out of college, it helps a little bit. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right. That's it for our first week one recap episode of Two Pros and a Joe. Make sure you share it with all your friends. You can follow us on social media at the number two pros and a Joe. You can follow Greg Camarillo at Catch Camarillo. You can follow Marcus at Marcus McNeil 73. And you can follow me at Matt Scraby. We'll be back next week with a couple more episodes. So let us know how you like these two kind of uh, shorter time capsule episodes and uh, let us know what we can do to, to improve going forward. Appreciate everyone listening. And we'll be back again next week. Two pros and a Joe, everybody.